travel and travel in the rest of the American West. But if you are watching this video, you are likely interested in visiting Alaska, specifically Anchorage, Alaska, which is actually the area near where I grew up. And I'm very excited um, to give you a brief recap. I did a seminar series like this back in 2021, and it was a huge hit for people who were able to attend them live. But I wanted to do something special and have new updated videos for people who want to visit in 2023. And hopefully this will become a tradition. Um, it's certainly a tradition as I'm joined by Kathy Dunn from Visit Anchorage. She was here two years ago and she is back to tell us all about Anchorage and what is new and what you need to know to visit this year. So thanks for joining me, Kathy. Thank you. I'm very excited to be back here again for a second time. Um, what I'm going to do is start with some slides that just talk about visiting Anchorage in general, and then I'm going to go right into what's new in, in 2023, because we've got an exciting year coming up, and I want to share all those details with you. So next slide. Perfect. Let's jump right in. Perfect. So Anchorage is um, the largest city in, in Alaska, and we're located right in the heart of South Central Alaska. So you can see in the background there, we're framed by the um, Chugach Mountains. And then on the other side, we are right on Cook Inlet. So we've got mountain views, we've got water views everywhere you look. Next slide. And easy access coming into Anchorage. You know, again, because we're the largest city, um, it's we've got lots of... Um, carriers coming in, a lot of nonstop service. And that's really important. When people are looking at traveling, they always want to minimize how many layovers because when you're going on vacation, you want to get there quick. Um, so you can see down below, um, I've listed all the different airlines, all the major carriers. Some of them are seasonal because obviously summer is a huge season for us. But we have found over the last couple of years that we're getting more and more um, direct flights. So that's been very exciting for us. Next slide. So we like to refer to Anchorage as um, urban and wild. We're a perfect mix of you know downtown um, city life and then also being able to get out in the middle of nowhere. Um, best of Alaska, all in one place. You know you can get here easily, as I mentioned on the last slide. And once you land in Anchorage, it's like 15 minute cab ride, Uber ride um, to get right down into the heart of downtown. But if you're anxious to get out into the wilderness, 20 minutes drive from downtown and you're up in the Chugach Mountains, you can go hiking. Um, a lot of times you'll see wildlife. I had a niece come up this last summer and we picked her up at the airport, gave her and her husband a quick lunch, and then off we went to go um, hike up to Flat Top Mountain, which is one of our, our most popular hikes. And so it's um, just, I thought that was a great example of how you really can um, get out into the wilderness and really have a outdoors experience pretty easily and quickly. Um, on that hike too, we were looking across the valley and my niece was saying, is that a moose over there? And sure enough, you know, we didn't have binoculars or anything, but we could see the moose right down there. So it's easy to um, see some amazing wildlife. And then um, we've got glaciers everywhere. I mean, within... Um, like a half or an hour of Anchorage, you can get to like 60 named glaciers. Most of them are in the Chugach, but it's um, a great opportunity to see, yeah, these sparkling ice fields. Yeah, you can either hike to them, you can fly over them on a flight seeing um, adventure, or you can actually go out onto the water and, and go right up to the face and see the, the glaciers calving right there into the water. Next slide. So a lot of people ask me, what's the weather like in Anchorage? Uh, yeah, Alaska and Anchorage are, are we're so far north that a lot of people are a little bit um, hesitant. Like, what, what's the weather really like? Well, in the summer, it's very comfortable. In fact, we'll see a lot of people coming up from hotter temp temperature um, destinations like California and Florida, and they want to get some respite from the you know 90 degree or 100 degree weather. And in the summertime, most of the summer, we are in the low 70s, you know, mid 60s to low 70s. So very comfortable, really good weather to be able to get out and enjoy everything that Anchorage has to offer. And the other thing that people are really surprised at is how long our days are. Um, in the summertime, we have 17 to 22 hours of daylight. So you can get up early, 
you know, get out and start, you know, hiking or go on a, a day tour. Um, what I've shown you there on the slide there is, you know, a kayaking adventure. And then also, you know, flight seeing is a great way to see Anchorage and to see um, Alaska. And we've got a great partner um, here in town. It's um, Rest Flying Service. And they have also have a um, sister company up in Talkeetna that is um, K2 Aviation. So real easy to grab one of those flights. They offer, you know, longer flights or shorter flights so that depending on what your schedule is like, it's easy to get that view from above. Next slide. No, oh, come on now. Oh no, where did, oh my gosh, the slide just moved. Apologies, Oops. it just jumped okay, on well, my screen. It didn't jump for anyone else, we're good, okay. Okay, so winter time is also really enjoyable. Um, at the very beginning, I talked to you about how we have the mountains on one side and Cook Inlet waters on the other side, and that actually insulates us from some of the really um, colder weather. We have, you know, Typically, our temps are in the mid-20s. I think today we're right around mid-20. We've got a little snow coming down today, but um, five to 10 hours of daylight. And our news gives us an update every night saying, this is how many hours we have right now. So starting today, we have seven hours of daylight. So typically, it comes up around 940 and then, um, you know, probably around 4 to five, it's starting to get a little dusky. But again, you get up in the morning, you, you know, you've got your plan set, you know, you're either going hiking or you're gonna go um, you know, on a snowmobile tour, go skiing, um, plus usable daylight to get out and really enjoy um, the snow. And the great thing when we're in like the mid twenties, it's, it's perfect snow um, temperature because you're not getting that crusty, you know, layer, you've got still fluffy um, snow. And I heard from a friend who was skiing at Alaska yesterday that the powder was amazing. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, getting into that sweet spot of the mid twenties is great, but we will go typically, you know, we don't get below zero too much in Anchorage, but um, even in the teens, there's no such thing as bad weather. It's just bad gear. So you have to make sure you're you're ready for it. Um, the other thing that I really want to point out is in the winter months, um, it's a great time to see the northern lights or aurora borealis. And you can actually see when you're just in downtown Anchorage even. Um, there's often times where we've been out walking, you know, in the evening. And, you know, commonly I'll see like a group you know, walking a little bit ahead of us and all of a sudden they stop and look up and you're like, what are they doing? And you look up and there's the Northern Lights. Um, typically you see a lot of greens and yellows, but if you're lucky, you'll catch some of those reds and, and purples. And, you know, really it's, it's something that you won't forget. Um, once you see the Northern Lights, it's, it's really exciting. It is, you know, Mother Nature's light show. And you can you know, when you check into your hotel, you can actually ask them for a Northern Lights wake up call so that you can go to sleep knowing that if the lights come out, the, um, the hotel will, will um, give you a call so that you can get out of bed and go, go see the lights. Um, you know, you can see them on your own, but if you really want to get out um, outside of the city limits, you'd probably want to do a tour. And there are several companies that will pick you up. Usually it's around nine or 10 o'clock at night. They drive you out to a more secluded area where you're away from the city lights um, and they know where to go. They check the Aurora um, forecast that the university here um, puts together. So your chances of seeing the, the Northern Lights are pretty good. If you're traveling between, usually it's late August all the way through April is when you can see the nor Northern Lights. Next one. So the other thing that is a great draw for Anchorage is um, people want to learn about the diverse cultures um, and the Alaska Native heritage. Um, Anchorage actually lies within the traditional homelands of the Denina Athabascan people and the native village of Eklutna. What I've shown on the screen here is a, um, a two-page spread from our um, visitor guide. And a lot of people are really interested in knowing not only the culture and the heritage, but they want to learn a couple of the, the words, you know, what, what was this area called before it became Anchorage? And um, so one of the, so the downtown Anchorage area was actually a, a trapping location and Cook Inlet, which is the water that's right off of the, um, that you can see right from the city is known as Takatnu. And that means um, the meaning in 
um, the Athabascan language is Big Water River. So um, what we tried to do was share some of the um, real iconic places in Anchorage. We worked with the, um, the Alaska Museum and we asked them to help us put this together so that people when they're traveling through the municipality of Anchorage, they can say, okay, this is what it was historically called and this is how I can pronounce it. So we're really um, excited about working with the museum and the Alaska Native Heritage Center to help sort of elevate some of this messaging and to make people realize when they land in what is considered a pretty modern, you know, town that Anchorage is today, um, back, you know, 10,000 years ago it was actually a trapping location. So we really like to elevate those sort of messages. Next slide. <coughs> So again, um, checking out the Anchorage Museum, the Alaska Native Heritage Center, those are probably the two um, best places to really immerse yourself and learn about, you know, the people who, who lived here and, um, you know, are really the, the caretakers of the, of the land. Um, both places have amazing exhibits. Um, you can spend, you know, easily three hours in each of those locations, um, just trying to learn everything that you can. Um, at the Native Heritage Center, they have a lot of live, um, you know, dances and and musical, um, you know, people singing. And so they have a stage where you could just sit, you pop in, you know, listen for how, however long you want. Um, and then at the Native Heritage Center, you can actually walk along a man-made um, lake out there. And they have traditional dwellings from each of the major um native groups. And so you can really learn about, you know, how, how people lived and how they took advantage of what was there for them. Um, a lot of the native um, totem poles are out there as well. And then you'll see um, on the left of the screen, the woman with the dance bands. The Native Heritage Center also has artists actually working at tables. And you can talk to them. You can ask them about the materials that they're using. Um, oftentimes they're for sale. Both the um, museum and the Native Heritage Center also have great um, gift shops. If you like to take home an authentic um, you know, um, token or a souvenir from your trip. So I encourage you to check out both of those, um, those um, attractions. Next slide. So no vacation is complete without sampling the local cuisine. Um, obviously, Alaska is known for its um, fresh Alaska seafood. We've got salmon, we've got halibut, we've got oysters, clams, scallops, you know, everything that um, you know, you've always heard about Alaska. And typically when you go to the restaurants, you can ask them, you know, what do you have fresh today? And they will tell you, you know, what seafood, when it came in. And so you're guaranteed that it's fresh. Um, earlier, I told you that in the summer, we have 17 to 22 hours of, of daylight. And what's great about that is in our Matsu Valley, um, lots of farm areas, um, they actually grow a lot of local produce. Um, you know, there's a lot of greens and um, yeah, I think, let me think what else, carrots are well known and um, beets. And so a lot of the restaurants will work with the local farmers so that they can get, you know, the freshest ingredients possible. Um, the other thing that grows very well up here are berries. So you'll get raspberries, blueberries, rhubarb, and a lot of the chefs will try to, um, you know, incorporate those into their dishes. Um, you see a piece of cake there with like sort of a raspberry, blueberry glaze over the top. And again, these are local berries that they're, um, that they're cooking with whenever they can get them. Now the other local delicacy is what's known, and I see Valerie laughing already, what's known as a um, reindeer sausage. And we actually have street vendors who have their carts and you know, they'll sell you a, a reindeer dog right there off the street. You can, you know, get it really simple and just put, um, you know, it's just the sausage and the bun, ketchup, mustard, whatever you want to put on. But a lot of them, too, will have, um, you know, sauteed up some onions and, and peppers. And so quite delicious. Um, also in the restaurants, you'll often see reindeer sausage offered, you know, along with your eggs for breakfast or sliced and put on a pizza. So lots of different options. You always find it with um, chili as well. So a delicious, a delicious delicacy. I have <laughs> eaten it 
all of those ways. <laughs> Every way that you have said, <laughs> I have had it, and they're all delicious. Yes, 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 and yes. <laughs> Okay, next one. Okay, and then the other thing, too, is we have an incredible craft brewery and distillery um, scene in Anchorage. I think we've got about a dozen in Anchorage itself, and then most of the restaurants and bars that you go to will have other, um, you know, craft beers on, on tap, you know, from the rest of the state. I think there's like 30 breweries and distilleries throughout the state, and a dozen of them easy are here in Anchorage. And again, what's fun with the wineries and the distilleries and the bartenders is they will look at what fresh options are um, available for them to incorporate into their, their um, you know, craft brews or their drinks. And so oftentimes you'll see like um, spruce tips or fresh berries or um, local honey is another one that's been added in. Um, so anyways, I encourage you to, to sip if you are an imbibing person, but you can also get mocktails. You know, most of the bars will give you something that, you know, it's minus the alcohol, but still just as good. So check those out. So now we're into what's new in 2023. And there is, this is one of my favorite um, Northern Lights scenes because you can see that um, purple and red in, in addition to the yellows and the greens. So now we're on to the next slide. Okay, this is the much anticipated Nordic Spa at Alyeska Resort. This has been in the works for a couple of years. Um, it had been scheduled to open earlier, but again, because of the pandemic and you know just getting the materials up, it was delayed a little bit. And they did open it in phases so that people could, you know, as as parts of the um, the spa were opened, they would let people in. And now it's fully opened. Um, it, Alyeska is about 45 minute drive south of Anchorage. So very, you know, easy, easy to do a day trip down to Alyeska Resort. Um, if you're coming in the winter, obviously um, snowboarding, skiing, um, cross country skiing is available down there as well. And then no better way to cap off the day than go to the, um, the Nordic Spa. And again, it's a circuit. So it's got you know, the hot and cold pools. It's got three different kinds of saunas. There's a rainforest steam room. And then you can make a day of it because they have a bistro that is just private for the Nordic spa. So it's not open to all the, the skiers and everyone else down at the um, resort. It's basically just for those who are enjoying the, um, you know, the spa. And what they tried to do was really make it so that it's a nice walking circuit. You can go from pool to pool to sauna, you know, to steam room, stop and have a bite. There is no time limit. So you, you do make an appointment to get in and they do cap it so that they only have so many people in at a certain time. But once you're in, you can stay and, you know, you want to enjoy for two hours. Great. You want to stay for six hours, great. So it's it's a really great um, opportunity to spend time outside and just relaxing. It is a phone-free zone. Um, the cost is 119, and so it's it's actually you know if you figure it out for by the hour, it, it's quite affordable. Next one, yes. And this is big news. Broadway is coming to Anchorage. Um, I know. It's incredible. So it's it's a Tony Award winning musical Hamilton will be the first one coming. And this is the regular Broadway touring group. So they're going to kick off their season in Anchorage and then move on to other cities. And so this is huge. We have a beautiful um, Alaska Center for the Performing Arts, um, but we've never had a touring group of this caliber. <clears throat> um, so this year, um, Hamilton and then the um, Come From Away, the musical Come From Away. And then next year we have six, and then we also have Aladdin coming in. And what they're doing is they're selling this as a subscription, or you can just individually buy, you know, the performance that you want to go to. But the, the prescription for all four shows that are shown over the course of two years is just $315. So quite amazing. Um, obviously, if you want better seats, you you pay up a little bit for that for more premium seats. But again, it it makes it so that it's a, affordable to all. And one of the major sponsors is Alaska Airlines, which is really a great um, partner up here. You know, they're they're not only providing the um, you know the flights in and out of Anchorage, but they're really looking at you know how they can make um, 
life in Alaska more enjoyable. And so them underwriting this along with GCI, one of our um, telephone partners, um, that's what really helped make this happen. So we're really excited about this. So next one. So Alaska Footprints is a newer company in Anchorage. They, um, they actually do food tours and they started last year and they do um, like half day walking tours and everything's included. Um, they have small groups of just nine people. All costs are included. So they'll walk you around um, town. They'll tell you about the history and then you'll stop. And I think that picture is showing them at one of the um, reindeer sausage stands. Um, but new this year, they've got two different um, tours that they're opening up in the spring. So in the next couple of months, they'll have a full day Alaska um, sightseeing and food tour. And then they're also going to do a half day guided wildlife tour from Anchorage. And then that also includes lunch at one of the local um, restaurants. I think it's bread and brew. Next one. So My Alaska Guide is a, um, it's an app for your phone. And what they do is they have a walking tour that you can just, you download it on your phone. I, I've done, um, downloaded it already as well. It's about two hours of walking. Best of all, they have a free and a paid version. The paid version is only $5.99. So obviously I, I think that's pretty affordable. And what's great about this is in if you're in town for a shorter period and you're like, well, I don't really have time for a half day tour, but I want to get, you know, more acquainted with what Anchorage has to offer. This is a perfect way to fill a couple hours, you know, and they, um, again, I've downloaded on my phone and looked at it. I've got just the free version right now. I'm waiting for their art tour to come up, but they do have three new tours under construction that they expect to launch this year. So the Anchorage art tour, um, what they call an Anchorage down and dirty tour, which is um, it really highlights some of the local art, you know, the murals. And we actually have trash cans that are painted up as well. So, um, and then the down and dirty tour also highlights some of the local dive bars. So that's always fun. <clears throat> and then they're also going to have an Anchorage to Seward and then Seward to Anchorage driving tour. So again, this is something that's, um, you know, it's easy to download. It's very informative. Um, you know, it's a woman run company. So it's, um, it's great to see them expanding. I think they've had their My Alaska guide out for probably three years now. And then, like I said, these new tours are under construction. So be sure to check them out. And next slide. Okay, this is also very exciting. So we used to have what was called Knick River Lodge, and it's about 40 minutes um, of Anchorage. Well, they've rebranded and now they're called the Alaska Glacier Lodge. Now, the other big news is they've typically been open just in the summer with 22 cabins. And you can see how it's set in this beautiful area. Um, it's fairly remote, nothing else is out there, um, but they opened up seven cabins this winter. So that's really exciting for people who like to get out in the winter, um, you know, play in the snow, go snow machining, do tours, um, but then come back to a nice warm cabin. The other thing they offer out there is the Raven's Perch Restaurant. So it's um, fresh, locally sourced cuisine. They have a great wine list, um, drafts from local breweries. They have a beautiful um, deck so you can sit outside on, the, on a sunny day and, and just enjoy all the, the beauty and the scenic around you. Um, in the winter time, they haven't opened up Raven's Perch, but like I said, this is the first winter that they've been open. And so I think as they um, get more people interested in coming out in the winter time, we'll see them adding in more, um, you know, amenities and services. Now, the big draw of going out to Alaska Glacier Lodge is all of the tours that you can get, um, that you can book right there. So you can book a glacier ice climbing or snowshoeing or dog sledding or ATV tour. Um, they work with a helicopter company out there so you can go on a heli tour over the Knick um, Glacier and the Chugach Range. Now these are a bit pricier. So per night, the cabins are $199 per night, which is really well priced for the Anchorage area. Now, if you want to go on one of the tours, and anyone who knows about helicopter time, helicopter time is expensive. So the tours are, they range between four and 700. 
And so a lot of times when people come up to Anchorage or Alaska, they sort of plan out their activities where they have one or two larger, more expensive signature events, and then they fill in with others. So this is a great option. Stay out at the Alaska Glacier Lodge, do the heli tour, um, but then maybe the next day you go into town and you go to the museum or the Native Heritage Center where it's a, a lower price point. Um, and it also gives you a little breathing time. So, you know, you're up in the helicopter going across these, you know, looking down at these beautiful glaciers and then doing some, you know, ice climbing, which is pretty, you know, heart pumping, you know, activities. And then the next day you take a little bit of a, you know, a slower pace and visit the museums or go shopping. Um, maybe go out for a couple hours on a kayak. So anyways, that's um, just for, in planning itineraries. I think that's really important to sort of pace yourself and think about your overall um, budget and then how you wanna spend your time when you're up here. So the next slide. So you've likely seen these kinds of vehicles in other cities. It's one of those electric um, bikes. It's called Pedal Anchorage, and this is brand new. They just started up, I think, late last season. And so this will be their first full season. What's great about this is you can, um, you can buy a single seat or you can, you know, and then join others who are traveling just, you know, one or two people at, at a group, or you can go ahead and, and get the entire um, vehicle for your own private group. And it seats 14 people. And if you're like me, you may have some friends who are like, yeah, I don't want to put in that much exercise. There are four seats that are non-pedaling. <laughs> so um, for those who want to sit back and you know have the fun, but don't want to actually do all the pedaling, they can sit in one of those designated non-pedaling seats and still enjoy. Um, basically, the tours are just about an hour and a half. And so you, you typically can do two to three stops. Um, you basically think about where you want to stop um, at the beginning and the, and the driver will give you some ideas. A lot of people will, you know, pedal for a while, stop for an ice cream cone, pedal for a while, stop for, for coffee. Um, you can also stop at the bars and restaurants and grab a, a nibble before you get back on. If your group is over 21, you can also bring your own, um, you know, cooler and beverages. So um, it's, let me see, the, the cost for this is $99.99 per person if you're booking individually. And again, that's for an hour and a half tour. Um, if you go for the entire, um, you know, you reserve all 14 seats, then it's going to be $59.99 per person. So the cost comes down, you know, quite a bit, but you got to find 14 people to join you in that adventure. But it's a great new adv uh, um, addition to what we've got to offer here in Anchorage. So the next one. So Anchorage Trolley Tours has been around um, over 25 years. Um, it's, it's a family run, um, family run business. Um, the story is that the current owner, who is now a grown man, um, when he was a child, he was just obsessed with um, Thomas the Tank Engine and trolleys. And, and so he had he talked to his parents to the point where they were like, let's, let's try starting a, a trolley company. And so typically they have one hour tours that depart every half hour. They depart right, um, right outside our, our um, door at Visit Anchorage. There's a little log cabin visitor center and you board right there and you can, um, it's walk up, you know, you can go up and say, you know, do you have room for two people? And they'll say, yep, you can get on this one or the next one, whatever. And they basically um, tour you around for an hour and talk about, you know, Anchorage in general, they take you out to um, Point Warren's off, they take you to um, Earthquake Park, you know, some of the, the main features in the downtown, you know, core area. Well, this year they're trying to, they're doing a couple new services. They have a new hotel van service. Um, we have lots of hotels in the downtown core, and we also have a lot of um, hotels in what we call Midtown. And so if you're staying in Midtown, but you didn't rent a car, this is a great option because you can, um, it's like every hour it goes um, from downtown to midtown, or then it goes midtown to anchor, I mean, to downtown on the half hour. And you pay a small fee that would be less than a cab ride or a um, Uber, and you can go in and explore downtown and then go back to your hotel again. Um, so that's something new that they're starting this year. They also ordered two new trolleys 
Um, because of supply chain issues, it's, they aren't coming in until um, September of 23. So we're going to miss this season. But what's really nice about these two new trolleys is that they offer a low ride floor, which the owner was telling me, yeah, to get those low ride for it floors, you pay a lot, but it's a lot easier access. And what he had noted over the last several years is, you know, anyone who um, has any mobility issues, having to climb four or five steps into the trolley was sometimes, you know, not the easiest thing. And so he was like, boy, how can I help my clients, you know, my customers better. And so he looked into these, um, these low ride floor trolleys, and now you will have to still do one step up, but then you're, you're, that's it. So um, I think that's going to be a great addition. And again, those are coming in September of 23. So that's exciting. Next slide. Okay, the Alaska Wildlife Conservation Center, that is down south of town about 40 minutes. Um, you know, basically you go down the highway and you either turn left to go into Alaska Resort or you go down a few more miles and you're at the Alaska Wildlife Conservation Center. Um, this again has been around for quite a while. It's a huge favorite um, among visitors because there's an opportunity to see um, animals that um, most of them are or orphaned or have been hurt in some way. And so um, this is like an open air, large pen um, opportunity to see, you know, all kinds of animals. They've got bears, they've got moose, reindeer, elk, fox, porcupine, wolves, bison, lynx, um, like I said, all kinds of animals. And so they've been around for quite a while. It's a nonprofit, you know, like sanctuary. They, and, and very, um, science oriented. They have, you know, um, people who really know animals and how to care for them. Um, so you can learn a lot. And this is what's great this year is that they've got a couple new things. Um, they've been noticing they had one ticket booth. And so sometimes the line would get long. And so that's what I love about, you know, our Anchorage businesses is that they're always looking at how can we make the visitor experience better? Um, so what they've done is rather than one ticket booth, they now have three. One of those three is dedicated to tour operators who may be coming in with a van or a larger motor coach. So again, the idea is to get people in quickly so they're not waiting in a line and they're there for what they want to see. Um, you'll see up in the upper corner, there's people doing, um, they're looking down at the bear um, enclosure and you can get up above. And so you're not looking through a like chain link fence. You're able to see the bear as it's, you know, just going along its day, you know, just exploring its area. And, um, you know, this, this being able to see it overhead, that was a couple of years ago, but really very popular. Um, you see a lot of the moose down there. You'll see moose in town. You'll see moose at the, at the Wildlife Conservation Center. Um, so a, quite a few different wildlife viewing opportunities when you visit Anchorage. The other thing that's new is when you go to the Wildlife Conservation Center, they have like 200 acres um, of land there. And you can walk the loop and see the animals, or you can also walk out to the point. Um, and there's a new Matson Ocean Educational Center being built in the fall of 23. And from that point, you can see beluga whales. Um, and learn. There's a lot of interpretive signage out there. So you can learn about the whales, the boar tide, glaciers, the icebergs that come into um, that area. And we're, we're very fortunate that Mats and Ocean, um, they came and said, we're, we'll partner with you. We'll help build this educational center. So right now it's sort of an open gazebo out at the point, but there will be a um, physical structure out there. Um, and like I said, they're going to start building that in fall of 23. Um, the other thing that they're building this summer is an animal clinic and housing project. Um, because they have so many um, animals there, you know, obviously they want to take care of those animals and, you know, they want a more efficient kitchen is sort of the, the primary need down there. They're feeding all of these animals and they all have different diets. And so having a more efficient and, um, you know, more modern kitchen is going to help them with that daily task. And then the second floor will be housing for employees. And that's the other thing with a, um, 
you know, a facility that is 45 minutes south of Anchorage, if you're working there, you've got a bit of a commute. You're either living in Anchorage and going 45 minutes, you know, to and from work each day, or you're going into Girdwood and you might have maybe a 10 or 15 minute, um, you know, commute. But having housing there is going to be really helpful for the workers. And, um, you know, it's just going to be a beautiful clinic and housing project. They they are finishing up fundraising for that, but um, they're very excited to have that addition. So the next slide. So I had to throw this in. This is new that um, they just created this year, these um, note cards. And, you know, usually you would say, well, note cards, that's, that's not that exciting. But what's really exciting about this project is it's all about the animal enrichment. Um, when you have animals that are you know, being cared for, and um, you know, they're in they're in very large, um, you know, areas where they can explore, but still, you know, they are um, in need of some sort of a enrichment projects. And so, what they did this year is they they decided they would do um, paintings, and that's similar to what the zoo used to do in Anchorage too with the um, the elephants. But they did paw prints, and you know, when when you're doing that, working with the animals to get their their foot into the um, into the paint and then onto the onto the piece of um, paper, it's it's something different for the animals. It makes them you know their minds are like, what's going on? So they're always looking for different things they can do with the animals. Um, after Christmas time, another popular enrichment project is people can bring their Christmas trees down and like the muskox like to push these trees around. And again, it just gets them, <clears throat> you know, doing something different and makes them curious. And so these new um, note cards have been sort of a fun addition, you know, and you can see Kobuk, the, the bear did a paw print and Tsunami, the musk oxen did a, a nose print. And then again, Bree um, did a, a footprint. So I thought those were kind of a fun um, novel thing that they've introduced this year. And a great souvenir. It is a great souvenir. Okay, next slide. <clears throat> so the Alaska Railroad is celebrating 100 years um, in 2023, which is mind blowing, you know, 100 years of operation in, um, in Anchorage and, and throughout, you know, the rail belt. Um, so each year, the, the Alaska Railroad commissions an art print from an artist. This year, they chose to do two. And so you can see very different approaches. One is more of a, a pen and ink, and the other one is um, yeah, a beautiful array of different style of um, of um, rail cars that have been used here in Alaska. And so I just, I think it's so beautiful, especially that one down below where, again, the Northern Lights, it's just magical, beautiful. Um, the other thing that they will be doing on board is having, you know, special commentary that really revisits the 10 decades of operation and um, how the Alaska Railroad really impacted Alaska in terms of, you know, development and moving goods up and down, you know, the rail, rail belt. Um, the other thing that the railroad will be offering is centennial themed food and souvenirs. So they haven't divulged a lot of detail there, but I think that's very intriguing. I, I'm anxious to see what they, what they unveil. Um, yeah, these two are, um, go ahead, yeah, Valerie. I was going to say, um, if you are really interested in the Alaska Railroad while watching this, um, I'm doing a chat, a live chat with Megan from the Alaska Railroad tomorrow. It will also be live on the channel. If you're not watching this live, just go find this seminar series playlist and there should be the video with Megan. And I'm going to get her to spill some of the beans on the centennial stuff that they're planning. Perfect. <laughs> I, I was just going to say, if you ask her, make sure you get back to me and let me know or I'll tune I in will. tomorrow as well. <laughs> No, I think it's a great idea. You know, the, the railroad has um, a program where they work with um, Alaska high school students and they actually come on board and talk about what it's like to live in Alaska. And they bring, you know, like a scrapbook and, and family photos. And so they really try to engage with people as you're driving or you're, you're riding on the railroad. So um, it really a, a, a first class um, experience when you're riding up and down so the next one. So the Anchorage Museum is also gonna have a special exhibit in 2023 and it's titled All Aboard, 
the Alaska um, Railroad Centennial. So that actually starts May 5th and goes through February 18 of 2024. And what I really like about this is they they really collaborated with others. You know, they brought historians and experts on the Alaska Railroad. And again, Megan will probably share some details with you um, tomorrow. But the effort is also um, supported by local railroad clubs, um, photographers, and just, you know, Alaska Railroad community enthusiasts. Um, there is such a thing. People who love railroads really love railroads. And a lot of people will choose to travel based on, you know, they want to go, you know, do, you know, Canada's got a well-known railroad as well. And so if you're a railroad enthusiast, you're, you know, you'll want to make sure that this is the year to come. And this um, special exhibit, I think, is just going to be fabulous. So next slide. So this is one of my favorite photos. This is actual really a, a real photo. It was done by one of our local um, photographers, Frank Flavin, who we worked, we've worked with quite a bit. Um, Holland America Line is celebrating 150 years of sailing, but 75 of those years they've been sailing in Alaska. And they, they met that 75 years just last year in 2022. But again, um, you know, the the cruise industry is really quite important to um, Alaska tourism and Anchorage tourism. You know, roughly half of our visitors um, are on some sort of a cruise, whether it's a, um, you know, a shorter seven day or a 14 day um, cruise. Um, a lot of people choose to sell or to come up and, and visit that way. And then a lot, what we've also found through research is that oftentimes when people choose to a uh, cruise to Alaska, they will come back again, maybe one or two times because they've sort of gotten, um, you know, their first Alaska experience, but they, they want to experience more. So oftentimes if they cruise one time, they will come up and do more of a land tour the next time. So this year we will have 121 cruises to Alaska in 2023. Um, one of our board members is with the Alaska Cruise Line Association. And she was saying um, just shy of 500,000 passengers will arrive and depart in South Central Alaska ports, which means you know either Whittier, Seward, or Anchorage. And so we expect a pretty robust year. Um, you know, when, when um, once we got through the worst of the pandemic, um, cruisers are very enthusiastic about cruising. And so a lot of them were, you know, they knew they weren't coming up, you know, in 2020 or 2021, but they were like, by golly, I'm going to be on there in 2022, 23. They're booking well in advance. And that's the other thing that we're seeing is um, we're going back to more of the traditional booking um, pattern. And so that's helpful to see. And the other thing that she mentioned in our board meeting was that, um, there, the for the last couple of years, the ships were they didn't have as many people on, but they're looking at like ninety percent occupancy in 2023. So that's also a good sign. Um, in Anchorage Very itself, good. we will have two cruise ships. We will have a cruise ship in Anchorage on May 11th and September 21. So at the beginning of the season, at the end of the season. season. And when the cruise ships come in, I mean, it's a beautiful sight as you can see on that um, image on the screen. And typically they come in around 11 a.m. and then they depart at 8 p.m. So they've got a full day to um, enjoy what Anchorage has to offer. Um, a lot of them will spend their time in town um, doing a variety of, you know, local experiences. But a lot of them will go out and do like a four hour, you know, like a half hour kayaking tour or you know, um, go hiking in the mountains. Um, so from 11 till 8 is, a, is the perfect time. That's when you want the cruise ships to come in and leave because people have a, a great time while they're there. And our um, visitor information center is always very well staffed on those days. And we usually have people down at the port welcoming people. And, you know, we've got materials and people um, giving them ideas if they haven't pre-booked something. Um, our visitor information center staff is there to help them figure out what they're interested in and guide them in the right direction. So the next slide. So I just have one slide on the, you know, what's coming in 2024. So I'm nearing the end here, but um, 
this is really, go to the next slide. This is really exciting news too. So Holland America oh. Line, I know. It's like, <laughs> what? And so this is why I had to put this in. It's an epic new itinerary, you know, and it's all around um, the summer solstice, 28 nights on board the Westerdam. So, um, you know, it's kicking off June 9th, 2024, and you can see the route there. So it's going Seattle all the way up, you know, the... Um, the panhandle into, looks like it's going into Valdez and Seward and Anchorage and around Dutch Harbor up to Nome. It's epic. <laughs> so I just, I, I find this amazing. And yeah, I, you I just see my jaw is hanging open. This is an incredible, I, I mean, I wish I had 28 days to do it. It's such, that's such a I cool know. route. It is so cool, and it's something that hasn't been done before. Um, mm -hmm. So it is a little bit pricier. It is, you know, one of those bucket list I ideas. But oh my goodness, I think um, this is going to be quite popular. Um, and then the other thing that I wanted to point out is, you know, on my last slide, I had said we have two cruise ships coming in um, at the beginning and end of the the season, but they will be offering two 14-day sailings in 2024 that include Anchorage. And so this is something they haven't offered um, for the last five years. So it's great to see that coming back. And um, certainly when you're in a town and a cruise ship comes in, you know, there's a lot of different excitement, um, different feel um, in the community. And, and so to have more um, cruise ships coming in is, is a really a welcome um, the thing for Anchorage and something that we'll definitely gear up for. Like I said, we make sure that we're well staffed when we have cruise cruise ships in so that we can really help as many people as possible. So I think that's it. Go to the next slide. And I think we're, should be a thank you slide. Thank you. So I hope that that was informative for all of you, gave you some ideas of, you know, what Anchorage tourism is all about and what's new. And like I said, it's, it's so exciting as I was building this slide. Typically, you have a handful of new tour operating or tour op offerings or businesses coming on, but there was so much happening. And I think that's just a real, um, you know, a positive thing that, you know, tourism in Anchorage is welcome. It's, um, it's something that's embraced, you know, by the whole community and the residents. Um, we're excited to see, you know, people coming in and, and enjoying what we enjoy on a regular basis. Yeah, thank you so much. That was one very reaffirming. I feel like whenever I talk to anyone from Anchorage, I understand myself better as a, someone who promotes Alaska travel because it just aligns so perfectly with the values of Visit Anchorage and what you hope tourists and visitors get from coming to see the city. Uh, it's just wonderful. So do we have a couple extra minutes on your time to do some questions? Yep, absolutely. I've got a, a meeting at 11, but I'm I'm yours for the next 13 minutes, it looks okay. like. Okay, <laughs> okay. Well, we'll just do a couple, hopefully some some easy ones, some, some quick and easy ones. So, I mean, I, this one, this very first one, this is a question from Jennifer. She says, when you're flying in or out of Anchorage, is there a preferred side of the plane to be on? So flying in, I would recommend the right side um, so that you're seeing the mountains and the town as you're coming in. Um, yes, yeah, so that would be my recommendation. Okay. That's where yeah, I that always was that's where I was thinking too. That's where I always prefer to sit. Um, and I was like, well, I mean, maybe the route's a little different, but no matter which side you're on, if you're on a window, it's an incredible view flying in Anchorage. And it's just, for me, it's coming, it's like coming home. So hopefully yeah. if you're watching and you travel to Anchorage as well, you have the same feeling. <laughs> yeah. It reminds me one time I was flying in and the person next to me was just not, you could tell she wasn't happy. And I was like, you know, are you okay? And she's like, I've never been to Alaska and we're moving there. You know, my husband's in the military and I just don't know what to expect. And I'm like, look out the window. And she's like, oh my gosh, it's beautiful. And I'm like, you'll, you'll be fine. And she's like, okay, I feel better. <laughs> so yeah, right side of the plane. <laughs> yep. Yep. Okay. So here's another one. We get a lot of questions in my Alaska travel tips group around this time of year as people are planning and packing. So talk to me about mosquitoes. What are they like? When when are typically the worst times of the year? Give me give us a rundown on that. Right. So I'm just going to tell you, I don't find the mosquitoes to be you know too burdensome in the um, in Anchorage area. And you know mosquitoes they breed in wet areas. So when it's drier, 
it's you're not going to have as much of a problem. If it's a wetter season, you'll probably see more mosquitoes. Um, typically, like I said, in Anchorage, you're not going to have um, as much of a problem because you don't have like pools of, you know, like water. But if you go out into the, um, you know, less developed areas, if it is a, a swampier area, obviously you're going to see more mosquitoes. A lot of people will, you know, just wear, you know, like, um, you know, repellent. Um, there are a lot of different things, you know, obviously the sprays, but there's also those devices that you can clip on and it, it's battery run. Those have been very popular. You know, we use those up at our cabin, which is more remote and, um, you know, it covers a, 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 a pretty good area. Those are, are available at, you know, any of the, you know, like the Walmarts, the Targets, you know, the Fred Meyers. Um, so those are, are good options, especially for people who don't want to put a spray on. Um, if you're going to go to a really remote area and it's known to be a wetter area, you can actually buy the um, mosquito nets that you wear over your your head because it's the buzzing in your ear that'll that'll drive you crazy. Or the ones yeah, that go very straight into your eye. I don't know what why there's always one mosquito like that. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's actually you know we get a bad rep you know, but I I sincerely. Um, if you plan in advance and either wear a spray that, you know, you're comfortable with or one of those, um, you know, clip on, you know, devices, it's, it's very, yeah, they're not going to bother you that much. Great. All right. Here's another one. And we kind of covered this one already um, when you mentioned that there's a new shuttle service from Midtown to downtown. Um, Elizabeth wants to know, is a rental car necessary to explore Anchorage? It's really not, um, you know, especially since, you know, we've got, you know, Lots of um, local cabs, but there's also Uber and Lyft, um, you know, so it's very easy to move around. And a lot of the, um, one of the things that, and I didn't put this into the presentation because we don't have a lot of the details yet, but we are working with the local community to do a, um, like a commuter route. Um, so it'll be a van that drives people to a lot of the, the main attractions um, and there will be a fee, but um, it actually will help move people along. So there is, there are some new um, developments underway. They're just not to the point where we can announce them yet. But again, also with you know what um, you know the trolley tours. That right now they're going to go hotel to hotel, so they can bring people midtown, downtown, downtown, midtown. But um, you know, there's lots of options. And when you land in Anchorage, it's a 15, 10 to 15 minute cab ride in your downtown, um, very walkable downtown area. Um, I think it's like a 10 block downtown core. Um, we have lots of hiking trails. So if you're staying downtown, it's easy to get down by Cook and Let Water. You know, you can walk all the way out to Kincaid Park and back easily in a half a day. Um, so there's, there's opportunities to get around. And you know, a rental car does make it a little bit easier if you're going to go down to the, um, you know, to Alaska to do the spa, or if you're going to go up to, um, you know, the Alaska Glacier Lodge, then you've got the freedom to come and go as you want. Um, but yeah, there's, if, if you don't want the hassle of renting a car and you don't want to worry about parking, um, lots of options with Uber and Lyft and all these other, you know, options that we have. Perfect. Thank you. All right. Let's do one more. So this is from Rebecca and she is curious if you have some suggestions for families with young, kids on the younger side. So not toddlers per se, but like that's kind of school age range. What would you suggest? Definitely going to the museum. They do have a discovery center for kids where like you can stand on this platform and pull a rope and it's this big bubble um, <laughs> tube that goes up around you. Um, it's, it's really a hands-on immersion type, um, you know, easily two hours, you know, depending on how your kids are, you know, there's so many different things. They go running from one thing to another and, you know, they learn about the animals, they learn about glaciers, they do these science um, projects and art projects. So the museum is a great place for that. Um, you know, local hikes, um, there is a um, fish hatchery um, in downtown that is right on the end of um, Ship Creek. And so if your kids are interested in, in, you know, like fish and how they develop, that's a fascinating place to go. Um, there is a, what they call a moonwalk. So it's basically the galaxy and you can walk all the way out to Kincaid. <clears throat> For kids under 10, that's probably a little bit too much. 
but they could go to several stations and they could say, okay, we're at the earth. Now we're at, you know, Jupiter. And so that's sort of a learning um, thing for them. Um, there's um, so remind many. Me, the, the sun is right by the performing arts center, right? It's yes. like, that's yes. the start. Okay. Yeah. I actually that's walked part of that. Um, I love that. I always forget that we have that downtown. Yeah. And Kincaid park, um, you know, you would have to go, it's probably a 15 minute cab ride. Um, but they have, um, you know, they have the chalet out there. So the kids, you know, if they need to use the restrooms before they go on a hike, there's, there's lots of different trails. There's a huge hill that in the wintertime people go sledding on, but that's a great one for little kids. They go running down that hill and then hike up back, you know, they hike back up and it's, it's a sure way of getting them, you know, fresh air exercise. They're going to sleep well, but they have paved, um, you know, trails, they've got, you know, dirt trails, but you could, you could go there for a couple hours and, you know, the kids, you know, enjoy just being out there with all the trees and you can see moose. I have also seen bear out there. I prefer not to see bears up close, <laughs> but, um, you know, there's always a lot of people there. So you always feel very safe. And, um, oftentimes in the summertime, they will have, um, you know, different food trucks out there. So you can also get a bite to eat. Um, local trails in town. There's lots of public parks. Um, we did do a neighborhood guide this year, and it was really geared towards what are the parks, what are the trails, what are the museums, you know, local attractions. Um, so pick up one of our or go online and check out our digital um, neighborhood guide. And that's perfect for kids, you know, because you'll know what each park offers. Like there's one that has a mammoth slide. So it's designed to look like a mammoth and you slide down its trunk. <laughs> well, amazing. Slow, amazing. Yeah. All right. And I will make sure in the video notes, there is a link to visit Anchorage, of course. So if you want to get any more information, visit Anchorage website is the place to get everything. And they can, you can order um, one of the visitor guides, have them sent to you. You can access them digitally if you prefer not to have it sent by mail. And um, yeah, so uh, we'll wrap it up here because I know you said you have an appointment, but I just want to thank you so much, Kathy, for joining us and sharing the wealth of information about Anchorage as well as what's new in this new year and even what's coming in 24. It's incredible <laughs> that we already have some things on the horizon there. Exactly. And then if, thank you viewers for tuning in. If you have any more questions about Anchorage, you can always comment them below. Make sure you like the video. It helps people find it when they're looking around on YouTube for Alaska resources. We want to make sure people are getting accurate and timely information. That's why I'm doing these videos. And if you want other videos, reminders of other Alaska travel videos or travel videos I make about other destinations, make sure you subscribe to my channel because they are coming. Uh, we have videos like this one with other Alaska destinations and experiences coming the entire rest of this week. They will all be live on my channel. And I have lots more YouTube videos planned for the year to come. All right. Thanks so much. Thank you, Valerie. Bye.